Good morning, it's Mrs. Clifford. I'm out today with a sick kid, so I need to give you some brief notes on the impact of the Spanish-American War. And on your paper, as you can see, um, I just have a quick review of the four causes because your causes are, are elsewhere on another paper or on a project that you're working on. So this is just kind of a little handy outline of what we've already learned about the Spanish-American War and how the United States entered into war um, because of economic interests that were being disrupted with the Cuban Rebellion. We had sympathy towards the Cubans in their quest for independence and felt kind of a connection to them based on our own experience with rebellion and independence. There were tensions that were aggravated between the United States and Spain as a result of the mysterious explosion of the USS Maine that killed over 260 US sailors. And then adding fuel to the fire uh, was the press, um, helping to uh, spin stories and convince the American public that war um, was the only uh, course of action here and that Spain was a true enemy. So the war starts on April 25th, 1898. It only lasts 10 weeks. I've mentioned to you before, it was a very quick, decisive, and very surprising victory on behalf of the United States. And uh, the peace treaty was signed in Paris on December 10th, 1898. Um, fighting had stopped in August, but the official uh, treaty signifying the end of the war is signed um, in December of that year. So what happens as a result of the Spanish-American War? How does this change uh, America's history. Here are a couple of ways that it does. The first thing is that the uh, Cubans do gain their independence. That is one of the reasons that the United States stated it was going into war was to assist the Cubans in their independence movement. However, um, this independence has a little asterisk next to it. If you remember, if you've ever seen ads where they have a little star and then at the bottom they have the fine print kind of telling you, oh, well, it's not really, you know, uh, as clear as it seems. Um, Cuba had kind of a semi-independence. Yes, they were their own government, their own country, uh, but the United States retained any control over who they could make treaties with. So if they wanted to engage in an alliance with Portugal, it had to be approved by the United States. If they wanted to establish trade relations with Germany, they had to ask the United States' permission. The United States also had the right to build a naval base in Cuba. This base is called Guantanamo Bay, and we still retain the rights to this naval base today. It is still an active United States naval base um, uh, as of today. Um, and it actually has some controversy because there are uh, several um, uh, terrorists that have been arrested since the 9-11 attacks. They are, um, they are housed there in a prison in, on Guantanamo Bay. And there's a lot of controversy over what kind of rights they should have and where they should be and, you know, what should happen to them. Should they be given trial? So on and so forth. So it's definitely still in the news today. Now, while the United States did not um, take ownership of Cuba, they did take ownership of some other Spanish territorial possessions. Um, one of them is one that some of you might be familiar with, maybe you visited before. This is another island in the Caribbean. It's the island of Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico becomes a territory of the United States. It still is a U.S. territory today. Um, and many of you guys maybe have spent vacation there. In the Pacific, if you look at this map over here, the United States also gains the territories of the Philippines, which is that um, big set of islands right here. And also they gain the island of Guam, which is a funny sounding name, um, but they gain both of those territories in the Pacific, very key locations. The Philippines comes in um, uh, to play in World War II with the United States. It becomes a very strategic territory um, that the United States uses um, in its quest to beat the Japanese. Um, so that definitely plays a role in our future. 
But perhaps the biggest impact of the Spanish-American War was the United States' new reputation. As I mentioned, it was a it was a very impressive victory over the Spanish, and most of the world took really strong notice of the United States, and they now regarded them as a world power. I wish I had like an echo machine when I say that, um, because the United States had a new confidence. They had a new um, focus that they could impact the world, that they could use their strength to um, help to improve economic or military or political relationships for themselves, for self-improvement. Um, so on the box that you see to your right, what I'd like for you to do is think in the terms of a political cartoonist. If you had to draw a political cartoon that showed the United States' new status as a world power, how would you do it? What is a symbol or an object or an exaggeration that you could draw to show the United States having strength or power now in the world? Um, think about symbols that represent strength or power and how could you draw that? So I want you to go ahead, um, take a minute and draw that. Go ahead and pause the video while you do that. All right, that's all I have for you in terms of these notes. So uh, your substitute will have um, the instructions for the next thing that you need to take care of. Hope you have a good day. I'll see you soon.